YouTube, team keep it clean, what's going on? It's Engraven here with another episode of NFL Questions from Subs where you can ask any question and we answer it in a video like this. If you want to be part of it, send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. You ain't even got to send an email. I love y'all, team keep it clean. We got some great questions as we always do. Let's do it. First question to start us off came from Tanja. She said, hey Engraven, how are you and the fam? Wishing you health, peace, and prosperity throughout this year. I appreciate you, Tanja. She said, I had a question about the Earl Thomas situation. We haven't heard anything. Yeah, nothing. And these, these grievances, they can take a long time as we are seeing. Um, how long does it take for the NFL to make a decision? Do we get the money back to help us with our cap space or not? We don't know because they haven't made a decision yet. Once they make the decision, then we'll know. Uh, and we either lose that, what is it, like 10 mil, I think? Something around there. We either lose that money or gain that money. So it's, we're waiting. Uh, last season, I figured we wouldn't hear anything, but being as though this is a new season, shouldn't the NFL have made a decision by now? I didn't forget about that situation. Things going in our favor would be so helpful to us, but the NFL doesn't seem to be in our favor as history has shown. What are your thoughts? Um, I just think that I don't know if it's on a back burn. I, I just really don't know what the situation is with it because we have literally heard zero on the matter. Um, it'd be nice if they can come to a resolution. Uh, but if not, then yeah, we just got to keep waiting it out. Next question came from Sidari and he said, Hey, Engraven, love the channel and appreciate every video. Uh, thank you. I uh, just wanted to share my thoughts or predictions for the Ravens on off this off season on offense. We are finally out of the wide receiver fog and have enough talent at the skills position to not seek outside help. I do think our free agent target should be tight end and use the draft to add depth to our offensive line. This year's draft definitely has a starter from among the offensive line prospects. Yes, especially that part about the tight ends and the wide receivers, too. They could add maybe one receiver, but yeah, they're, they're pretty straight. They're, they're pretty set. Um, and I feel like the type of receiver that they could add would be just a, a big body physical wide receiver. Uh, but I, cause I feel like I'm, I'm just very scared and, and kind of sad about it too, but I think they're going to trade Miles Boykin this off season. I don't think that he's going to be in the Ravens plans moving forward. Um, but we, we'll see. Um, but just a big physical guy, uh, even though you got Miles Boykin, but I, I, I just, I think that's going to be over, unfortunately, but we'll see, we'll see. Um, and, but as far as tight ends, yes, uh, another tight end, um, that can help, that will help, uh, healthy, uh, that's big because yeah, Mark Andrews, you know, Mark Andrews, he was the best tight end in the league this year. He was, we, we can say that he was the best tight end in the league this year. Wow. Um, but it, it, we can get some outside help too. That'd be nice. You know, Hayden Hurst, he about to be a free agent, but he ain't about to be like, oh, I ain't going back there to be a backup again. It would be nice, but it, it just it ain't going to happen. So, yes, I, I, I agree. And, of course, offensive line. Yes, 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 yes. And he said on defense, EDC has a history for targeting defensive linemen and free agency, and I believe we will even trade for one, especially with uh, the defensive line possibly losing three veterans. A veteran pass rusher is needed as well. I think draft will be used to add secondary help. I've noticed the pattern of double dips in every draft, and this year's candidate is cornerback. Ooh. Yeah, because you could maybe, we'll see what happens with Tavon Young, and then with Marcus Peters, we'll see what happens with him too. But, yeah, they've been doing a lot of double dipping. They've been doing a lot of double dipping. Whatever they take in the first round, they are going to take it again, uh, in the, usually in the, the third or fourth round. They, they, they take it again, like, right away. Um, just wanted to share some thoughts without getting too specific with re-signing, salary cap, etc. Hey, it's all good. We appreciated this. Speaking of receivers, next question came from my guy, Eric. He said, hey, man, hope you and the fam are doing great. Uh, do you think Ravens should uh, create better opportunities for people like Bateman, Prochet, and other receivers? I think Lamar tries too hard just to throw it to Hollywood or Andrews. Appreciate the content. Yeah, that, that's on Lamar. Uh, that's also on uh, G-Row, too. Um, because it's one thing if one of these guys is wide open, or even if they one-on-one -on -one and they got an opportunity to make a play on the ball. That's one thing. But it's another guy. It's another thing if these guys aren't even active on game days, or they come out and make a big play, or make a couple of big plays, and you look over, and you see them boys chilling on the sideline. So it's something that Lamar needs to work on with getting different guys involved. It's also something that 
uh, the coordinators need to work on with uh, getting different guys involved. So, yeah, it's something that everybody can improve on. Next question came from Danny. He said, you probably answered this a million times already, but what positions do you see us assessing in free agency instead of the draft? Uh, I would say defensive line. Um, and, yeah, defensive line. Uh, and he said, and if the ball was in your hands and you could pick us any free agent, who would you take and why? Thank you, team. Keep it clean for all the content. Really appreciate how you keep the whole team involved with your content. Most of the time, it feels like we're all chilling in the big living room, chatting it up. LOL. Best wishes to you and the fam. Stay safe. Appreciate that, Danny. Um, if I could pick any free agent for the Ravens, um, hmm, any. Um, well, I go offense, defense. Um, well, man, I don't know what offensive linemen are going to be out there. Because that will probably be the smartest thing for me to do. Um, so, who, depending on the offensive line, but besides offensive linemen, um, oh, maybe Bozeman. Ah, that's a candidate right there. That's a little like, like, like a little cheesy answer. Like, oh, yeah, Bozeman would be one. But he actually would be one. Um, but no, nah, on offense, maybe Allen Robinson. Because he would get what I was just talking about in the previous question was get that big body guy. Uh, yeah, Allen Robinson. And, and we have, again, again, that with Rashad Bateman and Hollywood and Andrews, Duve, Pro, uh, Tylen. Um, I would just, I would love to have even more riches at, for weapons for Lamar. But, again, it's important that this offense find ways to get those guys involved. So important. Because you can have all the weapons in the world, but if you don't use them, then it's like, oh, okay. I put on defense, probably Honey Badger. Honey Badger, because I feel like he uh, could take this defense to another level and allow them to just do more um, and just really take pressure off of Brandon Stevens. Even though he, he had been doing, down the stretch, he'd been doing better and better. But, yeah, it would be Honey Badger. Because just his impact and what he could do for this defense and, and at the safety position, his smarts, along with you got Marcus Peters' smarts, too. And you, you would just have that, that wisdom in the secondary. So that's what I would do for the uh, for defense. Next question came from Justice. He said, engraving with Harbaugh contract and Lamar contract coming up at the same time next year, among others in the future, next year we have a chance of winning a Super Bowl. And when we do... How do you think the Ravens will handle that situation? Hope all is well with you and the family. Appreciate your videos and glad to see your channel continue to grow. I appreciate that, Justice. Um, if that happens, that'd be great. Um, but if, if that happens, then yeah, they would just, both of them would get extensions. Both of them, for sure. Um, but I do believe that both end up playing out the last year of their deals uh, this year. Because, yeah, coincidentally, uh, they both run out at the same time. But, of course, Ravens, they got the option to do the franchise tag with Lamar. Uh, and with Harbaugh, yeah, the only other thing you can do is an extension. You can't franchise tag no coach. I mean, you can sign it to a one-year deal, but you can't franchise tag no coach. So we'll see what happens with both John Harbaugh and Lamar Jackson. Next question came from Tensei. He said, I'm done. I've seen this excellent team go to waste because of coaching, players, COVID, and injuries for the past three years. We've beaten teams when all the odds were against us. We can't bring up the excuse card when it's convenient. We go two steps forward. 10 steps back. I'm 9 out of 10 times done with this overrated organization that should be making progress. All right. So this was definitely a lot of frustration here. A whole lot of frustration here. Um, so, yeah, he just he was fed up with the Ravens recently. But I'm sure he just needed some time to take a breather. Next question came from my guy Eric. He said, you're only great and hope you and the fam and everyone around you are doing well. Like you said, it ain't over till it's over. And it is officially over. And because of that, it's time to start looking forward to the draft. Uh, every year, once the season ends, I like to gain some knowledge on possible prospects that could come to Baltimore. But I always like to hear other people's opinions as well. So my main question is, what position do you think we focus on this year in the draft? In my opinion, we will focus on the trenches and defensive backs. Two guys I like a lot uh, who will most likely go in the first round are Cincinnati's cornerback, Sauce Gardner, and Texas A&M offensive lineman, uh, Kenyon green as they are both an almost perfect fit with the team um so uh what do i think the ravens are going to focus on what position do i focus on this year in the draft yeah offense and defensive line but definitely offensive line offensive line more than defensive line but a little bit of both um and i think the one that they will take earlier uh, it could really be either one but just getting not just depth not just depth but quality depth and possible starters too, because you just you you never know. Um, 
And he said, my second question is, do you think we will package a couple of what seems like a thousand picks for, <laughs> for another first rounder or a star player like Marcus May or Calvin Ridley or Jonathan Allen? Ooh, Calvin Ridley. Oof, that would be nice. Um, or, or Jonathan Allen. Um, that'd be nice. I would love if they did that. Because instead of trying to hoard so many picks and get all these projects and stuff, I wouldn't mind them trading up, getting another first round. Again, just trading up for a significant, a significant player that you know is going to come in and make an impact right away. Somebody that you got big plans for right away. Because um, all this, yeah, oh, yeah, we got 10 fifth round draft picks. That's cool, but you're going to end up cutting a lot of these guys like you did last year, too. But everybody ain't going to make it. That Just because you draft them don't mean they're going to make the team, uh, especially if they come in the fifth or later. Uh, they, it ain't nothing set in stone. Um, but I, I would love if they got even more aggressive and traded up, uh, like significantly up to really get um, somebody that can come in and, and, and they could it, could it could make a big impact, whether that be for a cornerback, whether, whether it be for whatever, really, man. I, I would love that. Um, or if, if it were for a player, too. If it were for a player, no problem. I, I would love that as well. I would love it. Just get stronger any way you can and, and stop. Stop working on all these projects. It's not the science fair. It's, it's not. Anyway, I, I hope you have a great rest of your day. And just like I hope the Ravens aren't when it comes to the playoffs next year, I'm out. <laughs> Appreciate it, Eric. Next question came from my guy, George. He said, Engraver, so I've commented on a few videos, but I haven't sent in a question in a while, so I hope you and the fam are good. Love team, keep it clean. I believe Roman needs to go, but Hobbs, you talk about changing philosophy and not wasting their strength. So my question is, I believe Hobbs should be coach of the year doing what, with, doing what he has done with all the injuries. I love Lamar, but do you believe his passing skill set is ready for the change? Uh, we have more weapons than ever before, Hollywood, Andrews, Bateman. I mean, maybe the best trio that we ever shall see. I don't know about that part. Uh, but it, they do got a nice little squad. But has Lamar matured to the point where, as a team, we can do the change without taking a step back? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. And as far as Harbaugh for Coach of the Year, earlier in the season, it was looking like, oh, maybe. But then when Lamar went out, it was looking like, oh, crazy. So, no, I, 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 you see, like, what the big difference is. Um. So, yeah, I, coach of the year, no. Um, especially with a lot of the decisions that were made down the stretch. Oh, boy. Uh, but anyway, he said, I believe in Lamar and love Lamar, but is he ready for that? I think he will be, but not sure he is yet. So what, like, what, what, should, they, what should they do if, if he isn't ready for it? Or why wouldn't he be ready for it? Like, the, the, this change of philosophy, it would, it would force him to be ready for it. And even though I feel like he's ready already, it, it, would, it would help the Ravens so much, man. It would help the Ravens so much and allow them to actually advance and, and, and move forward. Oh, man, <laughs> he would do wonders for the Ravens. He said, afraid if he isn't ready, the haters will come out even more uh, than after this season saying we strayed away from what worked and Lamar and Hobbs need to go. I feel like it's unfair to put the extra pressure on them and changing instead of letting them mature and seeing where the team is headed once healthy again and reevaluate. Love Lamar, keep Hobbs and Roman. Thank you, but goodbye. Oh, hold up. He said, Love Lamar, comma, keep Hobbs, comma, and Roman. Thank you, but goodbye. Okay, I get it now. Keep the positive coming. Keep the positivity coming. Love the viz and your insight. Appreciate that, George. Um, but yeah. Philosophy change, I think, is necessary for this team to really get to where they need to go. If they, they, they seem to be so comfortable, yeah, with this Greg Roman scheme. And Greg Roman, as an introductory OC, great job. Thank you. Thank you. But, hey, that, okay, thanks. Like, you, you said goodbye. But, again, it's, if Greg Roman goes goodbye, then if we still got that same philosophy, that old school football philosophy, then it's going to be the same old stuff. And if you, like, the, as, as far as the philosophy and the changing, the, the, the way that they operate, the way that they do, especially on offense, it's not a bad thing. Change does not have to be a bad thing, especially if you, you don't want to just keep them in their comfort zone. They, they got to get out of this, that, that, that old school football mentality. It, l let it go. Let it go. Open up this passing game, man. And again, you get a healthy team back next year, your run game ain't going nowhere. You're going to be able to run the ball. The run, because it ain't going nowhere. 
It's not. It's really not. You're gonna be fine. And then you you got all these weapons. Like if if you if you still wanted that old school football approach, run heavy, run heavy, run heavy, run heavy. Then why are you getting all these receivers for what? Why are you getting all these pass catches for what? What's the point? Just just get a bunch of offensive linemen. You should if if, if this is gonna be your approach, you should have the bare minimum at receiver. What what do you have to have like? Four or five on the team. Uh, no, maybe you have to have. I forgot how many you have to have, but have the bare minimum at receiver since you don't want to pass the ball that much and just get a bunch of old offensive linemen and a bunch of fullbacks and a bunch of running backs. No, man, ain't nobody on that, man. They need to open this thing up, man. Lamar is ready. The Ravens are ready. You you see the frustration in Rashad Bateman when he's out there on the field. You see Hollywood frustration when he's out there on the field. Mandrews, he he getting here, so he like, hey, I'm straight. Forget about the rest of y'all, man. I'm good. But you see it, man. You know what Prochet could do. You know you, you know what Duvernay could do, but if they would only like use them like these these guys not getting used to their strengths, man. And it's killing them, man. It's it's killing them. They're not getting used to their strengths. So until we adapt or change the philosophy to that's going to really use these players to their strengths, use Bateman as a 50-50 guy. I mean, you could throw the Bateman any time. He'd be open all the time. Hollywood is your deep threat. And he, he got he to gotta work on that catch in there too, man. Like, like, hey, Hollywood, come on then. Mark Andrews is, is your everything. But Duvernay could be used in the quick passing game, in the short passing game, in the screen game. Prochet. Another 50-50 guy, but hands crazy reliable. Could be a nice third down target, nice possession receiver. Tylen Wallace, physical wide receiver. His physicality is very underrated. Very underrated. So, and he'll go get it. Next question came from my guy, Diego. He said, I think it's time to let our edge guys eat. I hope you and your family are doing well in Graven. Uh, shout out to you for working so hard to bring us Ravens content despite these very painful times. <laughs> hey, man, just something to think about. Yes, the, the Ravens season is painful. But just to put everything into perspective, it's a lot more pain that goes, out, goes on outside of football than it does from within. Uh, but anyway, he said, uh, with the recent news that Wink Martindale is receiving quite a bit of interest for head coaching jobs, what interest? I, what interest? Had, I, I ain't seen nothing. I haven't seen, heard anything. Nothing. I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. As of right now, what's this? You sent this on January 13th. It's January 17th right now, Monday. It is 12.03 p.m. I have not heard of one single team interested in Wink as a head coach. So I'm not sure are we on the same page. <laughs> but anyway, he said, uh, I think that this is a perfect situation for the Ravens to be in. Um, I have never been a fan of Wink's scheme because of how much it exposes our cornerbacks. If Wink does end up taking a head coaching job, I think it's time we hire a defensive coordinator that will let our edge rushers eat. That part I agree with 1,000%. Because this is not the scheme for them to eat any edge guys you're not going to get a bunch of sacks here and if you do oh wow you are just you are an amazing player he just i think he just asks a lot of guys to do too much he just asks everybody to do too much and it leads to so much confusion you see so many guys the pre-snap like what do we do you see them having a whole bunch of conversations when the uh the offense on the opposing team getting ready to uh, hike the ball and it's like man like it, it just guys are just so confused they like man what what do we do because you just don't know so many times man uh, but anyway, he said, uh, I want to see Away and Bowser reach double-digit sacks, and it's kind of sad to think that will never happen under Wink's scheme. It won't. I mean, he's, he, said, he said sacks are overrated, right? He, he said that sacks are overrated. So, yeah, man. What do you think about this situation with Wink? Keep up the good work. We all appreciate you so much. No, I appreciate y'all, man. Um, and that's a, a really good question, a uh, good observation. Um, but, yeah, I... Oh man, if I know he's trying to be a head coach, but if Brian Flores could come here, be the defensive court, I'd say, oh man, I would, I would be so happy, man. I, I, I would be so happy. Um, but what, yeah, with Wink, it's just he, he is like, he has his personality, he has his scheme, and that, that's who he is. That's who he is, and that's what, it's, that's what he's going to be. Um, but yeah, if, if he got a head coaching job opportunity, that'd be great. That'd be great. That'd be great for him, and I think, yeah, it could be good for the Ravens, too. Um, but yeah, we I, I just really haven't heard anything though. 
Next question came from Sabri. He said, what's good, Engraven? Hope you and the family are blessed and well. Now, this Raven season was a roller coaster of a season. You ain't lying. It wasn't the season that we hoped for, and a big part of that are the injuries. If you were able to use one word to describe this season, what would it be? Thanks for all that you do, and I wish you and your fam the best. Um, stressful, um, insanity, uh, crazy, uh, wild, um, yikes, uh, pain, um, dramatic. Next question came from my guy Wesley. He said, what's up, brother? Keep up the good work and enjoying the content despite a rough end of the season for the Ravens. I always be Ravens Nation no matter what. Just got a quick question for you. Am I the only one that's going to miss Sam Cook? I feel like not many people talk about him or value him. I know punters aren't valued as much in the NFL, but he's always been consistent and helped out our special teams. Do you think he'll retire once his contract is up? He's going to be turning 40 in August. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm, that's a, uh, Good observation. And yeah, he, he certainly, yeah, he, he gave you so much consistency at the punter position. And Ravens, like Ravens with their special teams players like Justin Tucker, Sam Cook, um, especially Sam Cook. I, I think a lot of Ravens, a lot of us Ravens fans uh, can really like um, not really realize how good a good punter is. Of course, you don't ever want the punter to be used because you don't want to punt the ball. You want to be scoring touchdowns, 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 but it don't work like that. Um so for a punter to be able to help your defense and put them in a good position to pin teams back inside the 20 by kicking the ball through the air, that's that's a skill right there. That's a skill. Sometimes we'll go to the park, I take the football, and I try to punt myself. I'm like, man, how does he do this? How do you punt like like that? That's something right there. Um, but yeah, Sam Cook. Hopefully, we'll, whenever they do transition from Sam Cook to whoever's next, um, that person can come in, and they're gonna have like they're gonna have a little bit of pressure on them. They're going to have some pressure on them uh, to follow in Sam Cook's footsteps. And that's going to be something that's tough to live up to. Uh, but hopefully they won't have to get used too much because we'll be scoring a bunch of touchdowns. Next question came from my guy Edgar. He said, Angraven, Graven. Hope you and the fam and team keep it clean and doing well. But what would you think if the Ravens traded Tyler Huntley to the Saints? Because you know, you know we are very intertwined with them. Uh, plus, that would give him a great situation to start. Also, he would have a great coaching staff behind him. Ooh, all, those, all of those things are true. Um, they do have Jameis Winston. I think what they signed him to a one year deal or was it something different? I don't even remember the, the kind of contract that he has right now, but he would be in competition with him um, and then Taysom Hill, too. But he'd be in competition with Jameis Winston. Uh, so, yeah, that would be a great. Oh, that would be a great situation. I would love that for Tyler Huntley. I would love that for him. They would show him so much love, too. Oh, man, that, that would be great. I, that, that's like exciting just to think about. But I don't think that he can be traded uh, next year. Um, or this offseason or whatever, but that I, I would love that if, if he ended up in New Orleans and got a chance to start. Next question came from my guy Eric. He said, uh, do you think with the loss to the Steelers that the Ravens will get a new offensive coordinator? Because I feel like we definitely need one. No, I don't. I don't. I um, think everybody just get the pass this year and they won't change offensive coordinators. And the last question on this episode came from my guy Eugene. He said, what's up in Graven? Hope everything is well with you. I know I may get backlash about this, but oh well. I feel like the Ravens won't win another Super Bowl under this coaching staff. I think you'll you get a little backlash, but not really too much. Uh, a change within needs to change ASAP. We need a head coach that's not just a player-friendly coach, but they also need someone that will chew them out when things are not done. For example... Uh, Nick Saban or the coach from Georgia, those guys are the type that we need. He didn't say those coaches. He said those types. Because, you know, some people, they like to try to take something that you said and try to twist it or something like that. He said those types that are true a player or true a coach out when they ain't doing the right thing. Um, now, Harbaugh would do that sometimes. He, he, it, it depends on who it is. It, it all depends on who you are. If you're Lamar, he'll talk to you, whatever. But he ain't going to chew you out. If If you... Uh, Tyson Williams, he'll chew you out to put you on blast. If you are Chris Westry, he'll, he'll chew you out. Um, it 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 just it's the, it depends on who you are, if you're gonna get chewed out or not. Anyway, he said, um, G Rose offense isn't wide receiver friendly, but when it comes to the run, he excels at it. I understand we had injuries this year, but that's just part of the game, and it's up to the front office to find someone to fill in. That's at least as good as their starter. That's tough now. That's tough because your starter is your starter for a reason. Your starter is some, one of the best of the best players on the team at that particular position. So that's really tough. And, and there's a reason why some guys are free agents and some are not. Not saying that every free agent is a bad player or they're not a good player, but they're not on a team. And they're not on your team. So you felt like the guys on your team were the best at that position and the best for your team. So that's why they're your starters. Uh, but anyway, he said, 
Uh, there is not one that defenses should know we are going to go to Andrews all the time. Sometimes I've seen three people covering them. Yeah, that's a lot with decision making right there. With Lamar, with Huntley, there, there's a lot. But they they got a huge trust, big trust uh, for Mark Andrews. So they will give it to him in literally any situation. Uh, and with defenses, uh, and with this defense, the pass rush is a big question mark. I mean, sure. Uh, to have those top corners would have made a difference. But I'm going to say one last thing. Again, we won't win another Super Bowl with this coaching staff. Yeah, the pass rush, getting to the quarterback is always going to be a concern under Wink's defense. That's just his defense. That's how it is. Um, so you hope for better. You want better. Um, but as long as Wink is the defensive coordinator, he's not all bad now. He's definitely not all bad. But as far as getting to the quarterback, it's always going to be an issue. Um, but you hope that um, you just hope that going into next season, if he's going to be here, I expect him to be here. I expect all three, like head coach, both coordinators to both be here. or well, all three coordinators, special teams, too. Um, but I expect that to still be a problem. Now, one thing with Wink is that you just hope that adjustments are made earlier. And he doesn't wait till all right, I'm down to my last as far as players to then start making adjustments. Let's, let's make the adjustments early on, early in the season. You see something's not working? Okay, you know what? Let me change that. But I'm just worried because this, this coaching staff, they have a lot of, um, they can be very arrogant um, and, or stubborn or set in their ways. And they'd be like, hey, we've been doing it this way for a certain amount of time. Hey, th this is our way. This is what, what works. And if it's not working, then there's that lack of adjustment. It's like, hey, come on now. It's not working. Let's change some things up. That would be one of the biggest things. Since this coaching staff is going to remain intact, that would be something that I would love to see from all three of them. From Harbaugh. Greg Roman from Wink. Let's make adjustments and let's not be set in our ways. My boy, he like gotta made it, gotta made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and grave it, right and grave it. Shout out to Graven.